Since beginning our channel, we have made a total of 10 episodes of Galactic Hunter. The target for our 11th episode is one similar to the very first target we imaged in episode 1. In our videos, we have often talked about the enemies of astrophotography, such as the wind, light pollution, or the clouds. But we haven't mentioned another important one, one that mostly affects DSLR camera users like us. The heat. Take out your thermometers and see how much of an impact temperature has as we venture back into deep space to capture the Phantom. Living in one of the hottest cities in North America, we have the chance to image in t-shirts and relatively pleasant temperatures most of the time. And it is true for most seasons, except winter. Being so used to the warmer climate, it is difficult adjusting to colder temperatures. And despite that, we consider ourselves lucky to have tame winters without snow or humidity. That means we don't even have to use a dew heater. Today we go back to our usual place at the end of the blistering heat of summer, in early September, under a temperature of 109 degrees. We made sure to pack a lot of water in our trunk so we wouldn't be forced to drink from the Colorado River. We're joking, please do not try the water. One thing we learned from experience is to be very careful when handling your equipment after traveling because the heat can transfer and potentially burn you. And this, again, is from experience. Hello everyone, and welcome to the 11th episode of Galactic Hunter. Today our target is going to be M74, the Phantom Galaxy. So M74 in the spiral galaxy um, is going to rise in a bit when it gets dark. Uh, we got here early because we can set up our equipment and see um, without you know tripping in the dark and stuff. So we still have time before it's dark. And um, yeah, before so things get really really spooky. It's really hot here still in Nevada, so we're gonna wait until it's dark and hopefully it's gonna be colder. Um, and yeah, so we just wait. Luckily for us, there was a bit of wind to provide somewhat refreshing air during installation, and it settled down before nightfall. We prefer to be ready and wait out the time it takes for the stars to shine, rather than arrive a little later and become stressed setting up our equipment in the dark. It feels nice to get some fresh air. We often play the game of who will be able to spot Polaris first while we wait for the dark. On this particular night, we'll have more to talk about, as we are not alone this time. So today we do have some company, and it will be less scary for us since we're doing the Phantom Galaxy. It's so spooky out here. If you watched our episode about the sun, you may remember Bob. Bob showed us our nearest star using his solar telescope, which was a first for us. He also kindly showed us the processing techniques he used to get his solar images. Now it is our turn to help Bob taking his first deep sky image. We showed him how to polar align, stay on target, focus, shoot, and helped him process the raw files. We will show you his first image of the Andromeda Galaxy using his Explorer Scientific ED80 near the end of this episode. As for us, 
We are still using our usual telescope, our Orion 8-inch astrograph f3.9, as well as our camera, the Canon 7D Mark II. The Phantom will be rising soon, and we are ready for it. Ta -ta -ta. So we are using this right now, since it's so hot, to cool down a little bit the telescope. So it's plugged in and we're running it for about a half an hour to a bit more. And it's really useful before we put the camera in to get the telescope less hot. We quickly completed the polar alignment. In spite of being very stressed by those coyotes howling from both sides of us. We were then able to slew to our target for the night. Messier 74. Coyotes are probably the scariest animals we have encountered here. After big spiders. Pairs of glowing eyes in the dark watching you really makes you feel like you want to rush home and leave all of your stuff behind. Some advice we have is not to panic, as they're not looking for anything but food, and unless provoked, should not be aggressive towards humans. We are now doing the calibration for PhD2. So we selected this star right here, which seems like a good star. And now it's uh, calibrating east, west, north, and south, which takes about 10 minutes. Actually, it depends. It takes between 5 and 15 minutes. And we cross our fingers for so there's no problem. And once it's ready, then we can start imaging. M74 was discovered in 1780 by Pierre Méchin, who then gave its location to Charles Messier to include in his catalogue. It is a spiral galaxy located 32 million light years away in the constellation of Pieces. Our target is, with M101 from episode 1, one of the most difficult objects to observe in the entire Messier catalogue. Having the second lowest surface brightness of the catalog, it is no surprise how this target got its name, the Phantom. We were able to spot it using our eyepiece, thanks to this Bordeaux 3 desert sky. When zooming in on the galaxy, you can see that it looks very similar to another famous entry from the Messier catalog. M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. Zooming in even further, you will also see similarities to Messier 33, the Triangulum Galaxy, which has bright stars and nebulae within the spiral arms. It's really hot. And it's solving. We took our first image of M74, doing 3 minutes of exposure at ISO 400, then retreated to eat our sandwiches in the heat. But our single shot of M74 was... Extremely disappointing. Due to the heat in the air, even after dark, our camera sensor was, to put it simply, burning. As you can see in this single, unedited frame of M74, it is filled with hot pixels, and you can barely see the galaxy. We crossed our fingers that we would be able to do some magic using PixInsight later at home and kept imaging for three and a half hours. We spent this time helping Bob with his imaging of M31, which was fun and challenging as we had never used his mount or his scope before. All right, so we're in the process of packing up. Tonight has been uh, semi-successful. It's been quite hot out. It's still like 90 degrees. 
So I'm not, we're not sure if our shots actually came out good. Yeah, our single shots were really, really nosy. So we'll see how it goes in the stacking process. Um, low hopes. Worst case scenario, we'll come back when it's less A hot because uh, the Phantom Galaxy is still um, low in the sky in the east, so we still have time. But um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, so we're gonna go home now. Oh, we're very tired. The yeah. Red Bull couldn't help us. Yeah. It's <coughs> It's really tiring to be here all night. So, yeah, let's finish packing <clears throat> and let's go. Heat might not be a problem for CCD camera users, but it is a major issue for DSLR owners living in hot climates like us. Here is an example of the Milky Way taken during a hot summer night. That first frame is pretty okay, but if we look at other shots taken later in the night, we see more and more hot pixels polluting the images. Here is a second example. First frame, and another one, 45 minutes later. This was one of the hottest nights we've ever tried imaging in. We packed up, happy to have almost four hours of data, but we're afraid that they all might end up in the bin. After seeing all of those hot pixel single shots, we may not bother to return during hot summer nights, at least until we get a CCD camera or a cooling system for the DSLR. Bob packed up as well. M31 is a very bright target, so with shots of 30 seconds and only a few minutes of total exposure, his camera sensor was less hot than ours and the processing was a breeze. Here is a result of Bob's very first photo of a deep sky object. Not bad for his first time. We hope it can improve over time, just as we did, and photograph more objects in the future. We just woke up from last night, and when checking our bags, we discovered that we got a visitor again from the desert. It's a praying mantis. It's alive, it's just... I don't know if he got hurt with the bags and stuff, but it's alive. <laughs> It's okay, I don't scream. Gross. Gross, 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 gross. So I'm going to try to just put it outside then. Um, I love praying mantises. Yeah, but not when there are visitors like this. Well, I'm afraid it will not survive, which is kind of sad. But we'll put it outside anyway. So, as we feared, um, we tried to process our images, which was 3.5 hours of data. And we got this, which is... It's pretty disappointing. Very ugly. <laughs> it's really bad. It's a terrible picture. <laughs> One of the worst pictures we ever got. So, um, not pleased with this. It's not over. We went back to our imaging spot at night when the temperature fell. But had to end the night prematurely, and we spent the next day inspecting our mount. While we were there, we were excited to get better frames of the Phantom Galaxy. Sadly, our mount decided to stop functioning and refused to do any kind of alignment or slew in any direction. This is usually fairly easy to fix by doing a factory reset with a controller. But this time, there was nothing that could be done to fix it. After conducting tests in our living room, we realized that our mount was losing full power randomly. We were kind of shocked, but that hopefully meant that our power source was now faulty or failing, which is less costly to fix than the expensive mount. We then deducted that it was time to get a proper deep cycle battery for this hobby, instead of investing in another jump starter. Since we do not have the funds to make a new purchase at this time, we charged our jump starter for a full day and night, then went back to try to capture the Phantom, hoping for the best. 
This trip was stressful, because it was our only chance to finish this episode. On the field, the mount acted a little funny, but we managed to manually point it at M74 and guide from there. Nice, nice. It looks pretty good. Our single shot was much clearer as it was now colder in the desert. Okay, so M74 was very fun to process this time, compared to last time at least. And we were thinking about making a video about the processing. We did this once, but it was within a video, an episode, so we're trying to maybe make a video just about processing. And it and, might uh, be on M74 or another galaxy or nebulae, but we're not sure yet. Yeah, so we'll see in the coming weeks or months what we plan to do and make a video just about the processing. And uh, yeah. Before we show you guys the final image, we want to ask you guys two questions first. So first, um, we noticed on our images that there was some kind of drifting during our last uh, outing. The guiding seemed fine, and we don't know if the mount is a problem or the power, uh, the power source, which is a jump starter. So it's kind of bad, but look at those images. This is the first one, and if we go through really quick, you can see it is drifting, see? Look at the stars, they're going towards the left. And if we take the first image and go to the last one, which is three and a half hours later, look at the difference, see? So we have no idea what this was. Uh, the polar alignment seemed perfect, so I don't know if it's the mount that is really broken or the power source cannot just, um, like, is maybe... That it's faulty. Yeah, like, or slowing failing. too slow, or I don't know. So, if you have any problem like that before in the past, let us know. So we know what to do, because it's kind of scary. And then, uh, second... This is our very first image, um, like, in September. And that one was the one in November. So, really far apart. And as you can see here, there is some kind of comet-like thing. So the first day we thought, oh, a comet, cool. And then we noticed that there was another one, I mean, the same one, same spot and stuff, but months later, so it's impossible. So I think my best guess is that this camera or the telescope has some kind of, you know, dirt in it, like maybe your hair or maybe... Something that's affecting either the lens or the mirrors inside. Yeah, so I think last, next time we'll try to inspect our mirror and maybe try to clean this camera, but you know, if you know, let us know. I'm guessing it's a camera, I think. Uh, we'll check it out later. And yeah, now we can show you guys our image, which we're kind of happy with, finally. It is now time to show you our final image of the Phantom Galaxy. Here is the single shot of 3 minutes. Now, multiply this by 70, and the phantom cannot hide anymore. Three and a half hours of exposure for a decent looking image. It took us a total of three nights to finally get the right frames, which translates to 21 hours of time spent trying to finally get it right. Still, it was not as bad as Bernard's loop from episode 8. We are very happy. Not only because our image turned out beautiful, but mostly because we have been so scared for the past few weeks to not be able to finish this episode at all due to our mount slash power problems. We proudly add this night to our journal and start thinking about who will be next. The Phantom Galaxy might be our last entry for the year 2018. Which target will you choose for the 12th episode of Galactic Hunter? M78 is the brightest diffuse reflection nebula in the sky, but that doesn't mean it's easy to capture. 
Photographing this Messier object will be a bit of a challenge. Usually, we spend four hours for all our nebulae photos, but this time, we need to aim for about six hours to reveal all the details within the gases, as well as a more in-depth processing. The Owl Nebula is a tiny, dim, and boring-looking object. But one thing that makes it popular is its proximity to another object, the galaxy M108. When imaging the Owl, we will try to frame it so that we can capture both messy objects at the same time, and add two entries to our catalogue in one night. Two birds, one stone. Like the Earth, the planets in the solar system are constantly orbiting our Sun. You've probably already seen several of them when looking up at the night sky, but do not realize what they actually are. By getting closer to one of these bright stars, we may discover that it is actually a planet. So we came here to the conclusion uh, with a background behind, but it's so windy, so I it in the car. <laughs> yeah, I mean, make do with what you have, right? So thanks for joining us on this episode 11 of Galactic Hunter. Don't forget to visit our website galactic-hunter.com to see our full blog post about uh, capturing the phantom. And if you want uh, your image to be in our blog post, uh, just go on it and comment with your image and we'll include it in our blog post with uh, your know, telescope and how you got it. And uh, yeah, so we'll see you next time. And we have a video ready for you in about two weeks. That'll be pretty special, so yeah. So see you and kiss guys. Mm -hmm.